Well, it's just about four o'clock on four o'clock on the 18th, and we are off again. Mouth is a little dry. Still mulling things over in my mind. As death enters my dreams again. How you manage the thing that has feared the most is often an issue. It creates an enormous amount of emotional conflict that can be rather difficult to deal with. And so the amount of processing equally is equally uh, necessary even when you're awake particularly if you're a person as, such as myself who is a lucid dreamer you are aware of the things that you dream This remains keeps its presence in your mind even when you're awake. So there are things to deal with, things to think about. And this is currently the state that I'm in, or what I have been the last couple of hours since I've been up doing some gaming. I finish my meditation and uh, I'm off again. The meditation now is, a, is something a little different. It's all not necessarily different. The awareness has changed. Although the churches physically are in lockdown, the prayers and the meditation bring me back to church once again. So every time I am doing my prayer meditation, I am back in church. One of the places I love is like, a, it, 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 well, not like a home. It is a home to me. It is a house to me. And of course, as things occur beyond our control, and the house is removed from you, for whatever reason, You miss the house. You miss the home. And at times you can miss the family. Because in this case, in our prison, many are prevented from seeing family. Even if the chains aren't real, but only created within our minds. The fear and the chains that are created by the fear for many are very real and they're insurmountable, unbreakable and so without any real change they are bound, fettered and isolated removed from human compassion 
Such is the state of our system. That is, it is without compassion. It is inhumane. Even by those who claim and falsely so that they are humane and are doing humane things. Their pretense of humanity is false. Yet they will refuse to see the inhumanity that they create, the inhumanity that they do. They will state that they are humane, that they are virtuous. Although they are not, they are far from virtuous. And in many cases, it's a lot like the Barchester, the Barchester Chronicles, a lot like uh, most intellectuals who fit that profile. Uh, someone's playing good music. <laughs> This is the music that I know of someone's running for the bus, so... books from the time of Jane Austen, but just about the 1950s, are good reads, they're recommended reads. They present places and attitudes that although they are old, can still be seen within the modern attitude itself. Because the attitude that is always present is always thus, it is always current. We know the best, we know the most. This is unprecedented time. We are in a modern era. He even stated so in 1850 within the Bard Chapter Bar Chronicles. 1850, well, if you're living at the time, you're in an unprecedented era. <laughs>
the 18th, just around 22 hours into the day, 10 p.m. And we're winding our way away from the house, back to my place, back to more studying. And a second night, I should say a third night, of a new tea of I'm brewing. It's not a significant departure from what I had been brewing before, but Chinese tea, the same as Indian tea, are different in that they are not a simply a brewed leaf, but there are other accompanied dried or dehydrated ingredients that accompany the tea as well, and of course the brewing process. Makes a difference. This tea seems to have a more relaxing property in that it takes the edge off of tight and overactive muscles. That's one of my major problems with the uh, myotonic dystrophy, is that the muscles overactive, they are over engaged. It's an adrenaline issue. The tea seems to pull off the adrenaline very well and cause a relaxation in the muscles. Now, this is only a few days in. This has to be observed for the next uh, three weeks and then kept an eye on for the next eight months. And of course, you also have to watch for adverse effects. Not getting cardiac murmurs or anything like that along those lines, anything that's in sort of in the cardiac sense it has to be watched. by which one can create and, and adjust physiological consequences to deal with a variety of different physiological uh, issues. And the thing is, this is quite well known by Asian practitioners, and the Asian practitioners knew this stuff. Now, ironically enough, in the early, well, up until the debates, actually until 1930, this was known by most doctors. It was the, medi the medicine that was taught was not divorced from what we'll call the pharmacological or the chemical nature of what was there. It was inclusive. vitality to understand the effects of the medicine on the physiological subject. Not just simply be recommended by a chemist. So in other words, the doctor, the physician, was the chemist as well. The two fields were merged. It only became separated in later years post-1930, when what they call the so-called 
modern and modern medicine evolve be what it is currently. difficult thing to understand that medicine went through a series of evolution that it was not always as that as it is now and that the older medicine was not inferior What is current? Looks like we're going to be paying a bit of leapfrog. Guess not. Person that was there has been waiting for me. That's why you have to be patient. Slow down a little bit. It is in the necessity to always be top speed, to be doing top speed. And that allows for courtesy to be made as is necessary. Tonight's episode of Barchester Chronicle will reveal some interesting characteristics of the difference between boldness and treachery. There are people who are bold and self-righteous, but not necessarily treacherous. They're not, they are not, they have no intent to be treacherous, to be deceitful. But then there are those who are bold self-righteous, but self-righteousness is a guise. It is, it is intended to be used for treachery. But it's hard to see, for many people, it's hard to see that. It's hard to make the differentiation between self-righteous, bold, and of course then the treachery. However, once the treachery begins, the treachery never ends. And because treachery is without mind, it is a state, in many cases, an impulse. An impulse within the moment. The treachery from moment to moment is never remembered. And this is how a person who is treacherous, treacherous <laughs> is caught. They are caught by their own game. They are caught in their own web. This is where you get the, the, the phrase, Oh, what a tangled web we weave, weave when we first practice to deceive. In other words, our own deception that traps others into doing our bidding or excusing us for things that we don't want to do becomes our own downfall. It catches us, and we get caught within that treachery, and in many cases exposed to our own fault. And once again, you see the world of uh, Lionel LeBron in there. Uh, hate to beat a dead horse, but anyway, so uh, Lionel LeBron is an excellent, ex an excellent example of the intellectual. In the 1800s, a large chunk of the books that were written were written from the perspective of the intellectual. The behaviors 
of the Victorian era were very intellectually oriented. It was that of the mind. And this is what Dostoevsky took to suffer. So what happens is now you can go from Dr. 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 Oh, and this is the Boston pronunciation, or even the uh, English pronunciation, Dorchester. The R's aren't pronounced. Dorchester Chronicles. Uh, to, uh... To Lionel.